Today I will show you a basic race condition scenario and how to exploit it and how to prevent it. It's very inherent to have file paths, so you will see that in a moment. So here's a program called read flag. It expects one argument as a file name or file path. Then it will use the function or syscall stat to get information about this file. And then it checks the file that you specified is owned by root. And if that's the case, it will print an error that this file is owned by root. So if it's not owned by root, it will open the file in read only mode. And then it simply loops over reading from that file and then writing it to output. So let's compile our read flag binary. I also created a flag file that is owned by root and regular user can't read it. If you try that, we get permission denied. And I made the read flag binary a set UID binary, so it is executed as root. So we know the read flag program simply takes a file and then it will read it. So I created this example ASD file, which contains test, and then we can pass it into the read flag program and it will read that file and print test. The flag file is owned by root, so theoretically read flag should be able to read that now, but we get an error because the flag file is owned by root. This happened because of our check here, the read flag file will only read non-root files. But maybe you have this idea to use a symlink, and the symlink now points to the flag, and the symlink is owned by the user. So let's try it. Ah, doesn't work. So let's do the race condition. Like I said in the beginning, I want to show you a race condition problem. So we have a race condition here. So when it calls stat to get the file information, it uses the file path. And when the check succeeds, it uses the file path down here in the open to open that file. So basically we wanna win here a race where when we call stat for the first time on that file, it's just a save file. But when the program then continues to execute, we switch it out. And when it then reaches the open, it will then actually open the file that it shouldn't have opened. There's a very useful race condition snippet that I learned about at the 35C3 CTF from the challenge log rotate. I didn't solve that, but after CTF, talking with, might have been Niklas B at the time, uh, he told me about that there's basically uh, a syscall to swap two files. And that is really, really useful. So here's the code, let's copy that and i explain in a moment. So here we have a while loop. This while loop just calls a single syscall. And the syscall that we are calling is called rename at two. It takes some parameters, but the most important ones are this one and this one. These are two file paths. And we use the option rename exchange. So basically that's a rename system call to rename files. And with this option rename exchange, you can actually switch exchange the names of these two files. So basically this syscall with this option is just a race condition syscall. It's a really awesome Linux feature. So let's compile it. So in this folder team hacks, we already have this symlink to the flag. So we just need another file. So now that we have an ASD file and we have the symlink to flag. Now remember when I try to uh, simply read the flag file, we say it's owned by root. But let's launch our small racing program. We specify in the arguments the two files that we want to constantly exchange and switch with each other. So now it should be executing. Okay, so let's check out the folder. Okay, now this is switching so fast around that ls here even threw some errors. Ah, look here. This time ASD was pointing to the flag and the flag was just a valid file. <laughs> now ls was kind of so slow that uh, the exchange happened so fast that it uh, so thought that both files are assembling to flag. Basically, we just raised ls. And here we raised like the inverse. Now both files are not uh, pointing to flag. Anyway, now let's try read flag. Owned by root, it didn't work. There we go, we won the race. That's awesome, right? So basically during the first start, uh, the flag file was just the regular file and then while it was executing here a bit more code, our racing program exchanged the files again. And when it then opened it, it actually opened uh, the real root owned file. Race conditions are pretty fun. It's a very typical bug pattern that you can find, uh, especially always when you're dealing paths. So when you're auditing code or play CTF challenges, always pay attention to if this program that you're targeting is handling file paths and check if it always trusts the path. And if you have some ability to race between the first time it uses the path and the second time it uses the path. Just for completeness sake, uh, this issue is often also referred to as talk to, time of check, time of use. During the time we checked the file, it was okay. During the time we used it, 
it was then bad. But how can you avoid this now? This seems like a problem that is almost like unavoidable, right? STUT is essentially a syscall. So let's look at the syscalls. So on 64-bit on Linux, the STUT syscall is syscall number four. And when we look at the man page, we see that STUT takes a path name. But there also exists FSTAT. And FSTAT is another syscall, the syscall with number five. And that syscall takes a file descriptor instead. A file descriptor is a handle that points to a specific file. And for example, the open syscall returns a handle to that file which means if we want to use fstat, we need this file descriptor. So we have to move the open further up before the stat, and then we refactor fstat to take the file descriptor instead. You can already see that now we only use the file path once. The file path is used to open this file and get a handle, and this handle just points to that one file. There's no way to exchange this anymore. Unlike file paths, a file descriptor, this number, is a handle for a file that is uh, deeply rooted inside of the Linux or Unix operating system. At this moment in time, there is basically no concept of a path anymore. This is now a thing that just represents that one file. You can't switch that anymore. That file descriptor just points to that file. So let's compile this flag and let's try our race again. And also making it set UID binary again, so we have the same basic setup. So here we execute first our race condition program again. And now let's try to execute this. Okay, so there was no error, which means now probably for because of the switching, we pointed to the empty valid normal file. Normal file, ah, there we go. Uh, now this time it was again the actual root file. And when it now tried to read it, we get the error. But as you can see, no chance for race condition anymore. Now it only depends on which file is there at the moment when we open it. It was either the regular user file, which is empty and doesn't print anything, or it is the root own flag file. And whichever of the two is open during the race will either print the empty file or cause then the error. So we have prevented the race condition. Crap, I'm sick. That's not how I planned these uh, 24 Hexember daily videos to go. So I was out for a couple of days and couldn't prepare uh, more videos. I guess now it's even more likely that I won't be able to deliver all 24 videos.